Hello everyone, my name is Ankit and today I'll be doing some curve scraping questions. So the first question for today is x by x minus 1 the whole square. So for solving these type of questions, the st first step is always to find the domain. So now what's the domain? Domain is basically a set of all numbers which when plugged into the function makes the function defined. So if I plug in the value of x equals to one in this function, so I will get an undefined function, right? So let's see how it will be. Okay, right. So now I'll be just solving the equation. So it will be like in place of x, I'm plugging the value of one. So it's something like this. 1 by 1 minus 1 equals to 1 upon 0, which makes my function undefined. So therefore, I need to exclude x equals to 1. So therefore, x can't be 1. And I'm not including in this my domain. So my domain is minus infinity, comma 1, union 1 to infinity. So carefully note here, 1 is round bracket here also one is in round bracket it means it's excluded so domain is basically all set of set of all real numbers minus one now my second step is to find the x and y intercept for finding x and y intercept the main thing is firstly for x intercept you have to place or you have to put, plug in the value y equals to zero because at x intercept my y value is always zero so you plug in the value of y equals to zero, okay? Um, in this equation, in uh, like in place of f of x, which is which basically give you the y value. So you will replace of f of x with zero, and you will solve for x. So when you solve for x, you got the value zero comma zero, okay? So now for finding the y intercept, what you will do is you will do the same thing that you did for x intercept here for x for y intercept you will replace x, uh, x equals to zero and you will find the value of phi right so now what i'm doing is i'm just plugging the value of x equals to zero in this equation and solving for y so now when i solve this equation i got zero comma zero now which is my y intercept so now I have got my domain, my x and y intercept. So I can go to the third step, which is finding the asymptotes. So what are asymptotes? Asymptotes are basically the horizontal and the vertical lines, which are the lines where my function tends to infinity or the lines which my function follows to tending to infinity. There are two kinds of asymptotes. First is the vertical asymptote. Second one is the horizontal asymptote. If you see carefully over here, at x equals to 1, my function wasn't defined. So this means at x equals to 1, my function is tending to infinity, right? So therefore, x equals to 1 is my vertical asymptote. Now for finding up the horizontal asymptote, I will write the limit where my x approaches to plus or minus infinity, the same function x by x minus 1, the whole square. And the important thing, here is, uh, and the important thing over here is that x by x square, like something by x square. So whatever number you plug in, let's say you put five by six, or sorry, five. So it will be five upon five minus one, four. So it will be less than zero, obviously, right? So similarly, if you are plugging greater numbers tending to infinity, it will approach to zero. So therefore, my horizontal asymptote is y equals to zero. Okay. So now my step four, which is finding the symmetry. You know what? Symmetry is very important concept when drawing the curve sketching equations, when drawing the curves on the sketches or yeah. So therefore we need to learn about symmetry as well. So there are two kinds of functions. First is the even function and the second one is odd function. Even function is always symmetrical about y axis and odd function is always symmetrical about a region. For even function, f of x equals to my f of a, for even function, f of x equals to f of minus x. Uh, whereas for odd function, f of x equals to minus of f of x. Now I will tell you like what it basically means with these two equations. Okay. So 
firstly i will just write it as like okay you know what firstly i will just solve for f of minus x what it means is basically okay so i will just plug in the value i will just write it as for f of minus x for this i will replace my x with minus x okay so i can write it as minus x by minus of x minus one the whole square okay so this will be my value which i will be getting when i write when i plug in the value of minus x instead of x okay so when i solve this equation i will be getting minus x i'll be getting minus x minus x by x plus 1 the whole square which is yeah so it's square over here So it's square okay and so if i get if i write for the even function okay for my even function uh if i replace x with minus x actually you know what for even function i will be getting the same function it will be for even function i could i should get like this kind of function in the end x by x minus one the whole square for even function, I get the same value, like the same function as it is. That's where I say like it's symmetrical about it's symmetrical about the y-axis because it's the same function that I get after plugging in the value of minus x. And for odd function, I get the same function, just the difference is I get a minus sign in front of it. Okay, so this is the only difference for an odd function. Okay. And I'll be using now different color so as to make it good, look good. Okay, so this will be for an even function, and this is for an even function. Okay, I'll just type it in. Okay, right, better. Yeah, I will just type it down, and yeah. So this is for my even function and the other one is for my odd function okay so now um yeah now it looks good yeah for even function it should look like this whereas for odd function it should look like this see careful notice in front of the odd function it should have a negative sign whereas for even function it should remain as it is okay but the thing that i got is over here is minus x by x plus one the whole square okay so it matches neither even nor odd function so what i can conclude from this so i can conclude from this is that this is neither even nor odd function so it's not symmetrical about any x's neither x y or origin okay so i now move to the step number five which is critical point so for finding up the critical point what i do is that i will just do the first derivative okay critical points are those points where my first derivative is zero so that's why i'm doing first derivative over here okay so this is my f of x and these are the steps that i followed to do my f dash x or for the first derivative this is the quotient tool that, that i used in this equation because this is a rational function so that's why i have used the quotient rule over here okay so after i got my first derivative so i need to find the critical points and as i told you before in this line that critical points are the points where my first derivative is zero so that's why i just plug in so that's why i just wrote it over here 
f dash x equals to zero. From there, I got two values actually. This is actually this is for f dash x equals to zero and undefined at x minus one equals to zero. This actually I wrote from the above from here. It wasn't here, but I wrote because it wasn't in the domain. And one more important thing is that always to write whether the function is in domain or not. Like here, I have written one, which is which was not in domain. It's an important point because around that point, my function can be increasing or decreasing. So therefore, always write that point also, whether it's in domain or not. Okay, for finding whether it's increasing function in that side or decreasing function in that side. Okay, right. So after doing that, okay, so now, I need to find whether my function is increasing function or decreasing function, okay? So for finding that, what I need to do is, I will just take a number, let's say I will take from, let's say this is minus infinity to minus one. So let's say I'm taking a number f of minus two, okay? So it's, so this number is f of minus two, okay? So I'm solving for f of minus two over here, okay? And so I plug in the value in and in f dash x. Yeah, for finding whether it's an increasing function or decreasing function, you need to follow this rule. This one f dash x is less than zero, so it's decreasing function, and if it's greater than zero, so it's an increasing function. Okay, so that's why I'm just doing the f dash x zero f dash x over here. So that's why, like, I'm plugging in over here whether it's an increasing function or decreasing function. So I'll plug in the first derivative. So I'm plugging in this part in this equation, okay? So now, now I'll be writing it up, okay? So now it will look something like this, minus, my, see, minus and minus, it becomes plus. So it will be two plus two minus one, okay? Plus two minus one by two minus one, minus two actually, yeah, minus two, minus one, the whole cube, okay. Now when I solve this equation or solve this part, I'm getting, just a second, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will just write three again. So it will be something like this. Actually, it's not working <laughs> properly, yeah. It should be three. Okay, so now when I solve this equation, I get one upon negative nine, okay? So if you see it carefully, it's less than zero, it's negative, it's less than zero. So from here, if I see, I will use the highlighter now, let's say I use the green one, okay? So now it says if your f dash x is less than zero, so it's a decreasing function, okay? So it's a decreasing function. So that's why I'm having a downward arrow over here. Similarly, I can use zero from minus one to one and find f dash at zero and check whether it's less than zero or greater than zero, okay? So now, similarly, I will do for this side as well. Let's say I will take a number two and here I got whether it's a decreasing or increasing function. So when I got those values, okay, for minus two, zero and so on. So I got like, actually I have already calculated everything. So that's why and I know that from here, from like in this interval, I'm having a decreasing function. That's why I'm having a downward arrow. And in this interval, I'm having an upward arrow, which means it's an increasing function. And similarly, over here in this side, I'm having a downward arrow, which means it's a decreasing function. I did the same process. You just need to take in some numbers, like I took minus two in this side, zero in this side, and two in this side, okay? So now, when you got this, you will be surprised to know like this is minus one is the minima because throughout this whole interval, you just got only one value, which is minus one, where my function is having 
a concavity downwards. Actually, I will show you about concavity in my next step. But for now, you can see like it's concave. It's basically, it's decreasing over here. If it's decreasing and then increasing, obviously here's a minima, but one is not a maxima. It's very important to note because one is not in domain, okay? One is not in domain. So therefore, this is my minima. So if I want to find the coordinate for minima, what I will do is that I will plug in the value of minus one in my f of x equation in this equation and from here i'll be able to calculate my y value so this is my y value okay at f of minus one i'm using my mostly now blue color so i will just change it now for a good color or for change see okay so this is my minima okay i just calculated it from all the steps that i told you Okay, so now I'm having the minima also and whether the function increasing or decreasing. So now I can move forward to the step number six, which is concavity. So for finding up the concavity, we are having a concave upward and concave upward, concave downward. So for finding up the concavity, we always do the second derivative or second derivative, de derivative test. Okay, so this is my f double dash x or second derivative. So as we all know that whenever we need to find the second derivative, we always use the first derivative. So I already had my first derivative from a previous step. So I just use that step over here to calculate my f double dash x or second derivative using my quotient rule because this is in this is a rational function. Okay. So here I got my f double dash x or second derivative. Okay. So now if I need to check whether my function is concave upwards or concave downwards, I will see over here, like, uh, I will see, mm, see, now my, if my f double dash x or my second derivative is less than zero, so I can say it's concave downwards, okay? And if it's concave upwards, so my f dash double dash x or second derivative is greater than zero. Now, next comes a very important point, which is the point of inflection. Point of inflection similarly to critical point where f double dash x or second derivative is zero. Okay, for finding up the point of inflection, I will just use this equation and equate it to zero, okay? And when I equate it to zero, I will find my value for x. And when I solve this equation, I got x equals to minus two, okay? So at x equals to minus two, my function is concave, is having, is, is basically a point, point of inflection, okay? So now I will just see whether it's concave upwards or concave downwards. So over here, I have written one also because it was not in domain. You know what? It's a very important point to write also, like whether the point is in domain or not, because from there, we already saw that the increasing or decreasing can be changed. Here, concavity also can also change. So therefore, we need to write one. So I have written over here the point of inflection, which is minus two over here. Okay, so now we can see it's my, like if we want to find whether my point of inflection, uh, like whether my function is concave downwards or upwards, I just took a point minus three over here and I plugged in the value of f double dash x, which is this one. I just plugged in this value and I got less than zero. Even you can solve it. I, I will just tell you like for zero, let's say I will just do it because it's an easy one for now. Okay, so if I take zero over here in place of, um, see, even in place of X, I'll put zero. So it will be four and it's zero and it will be even. So it will be just four. So it's, a, okay, so it becomes four, like, uh, it, it becomes four, okay? When I solve this f double dash of zero, it's four, which is greater than zero. So therefore it's concavity upwards, concave upwards. Similarly, I solve for second derivative at two and at minus three, I got concavity downwards, concave downwards over here and concave upwards for both intervals from minus two to one and one to infinity, okay? 
So now I'm finished all with all my six tips for concavity, increasing, decreasing, and all that. Okay. So yeah, one so moving for, forward, now I'll be just drawing my graph. Before that, I need to find the y coordinate of point of inflection also. Because in that I need to, because when I plot any graph of my functions, I need to plot the point of inflection as well. So therefore, I just solve the same thing as I did before. Like f of x equals to this function. So I plugged in the value of minus two over there and I got my y value. So I am having my y coordinate and x coordinate, which is my point of inflection. Okay, so here are my important steps for plotting the graph. My x and y intercept, point of inflection, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, minima, and maxima, there is none actually. Okay, so now I'll be just doing, I'm just drawing the graph now. Okay, so firstly, always like always draw uh, what I say the horizontal asymptotes and vertical asymptotes firstly because it's very important and you get a fun get an idea whether my function is uh, tending to infinity at which at which line basically like if i say my mm, my horizontal asymptote is y equals to zero so firstly i will plot this up okay so it will be something like this actually it will be along this axis only so it will be like in this side um yeah actually just overlapped with x-axis okay and now I can use actually a different color, not black one. I can use, let's say a red one, okay. And I can use a straight line. Okay, so now it said it was my vertical asymptote is x equals to one. So x equals to one, let's say it should be somewhere here. Let's say it's over here, actually, just a second. So it should be x equals to one, let's say it's over here. So I'm just plotting it up over here now. Okay, so this is my, um, this is my vertical asymptote. Actually it will tend to infinity. I've not drawn over here properly, but it will tend to infinity. Okay, so now my next thing is my intercepts. Firstly, you can see my x and y intercept are the same. So I'm just drawing a small dot. I can make it a bigger one actually. Um, yeah, I can just draw, I think I can do it this. I'll just draw it over here. Yeah, like my zero at zero comma zero, my intercept is here. Okay, so my next point is, if you see carefully, is minus two comma, minus two by nine, okay. So now I will just plot it over here. It will be something like this, actually, it will be somewhere here, okay. So now I will be using my increasing and decreasing line and my concave upwards and concave downwards. See, if you care, carefully notice over here, from minus infinity to, to minus one, it's a decreasing function. And over here, it's having a concave downwards. So basically, if I say my how my graph will look like, it will be, actually it was still minus one, right? If I see carefully, mm, from minus one, yeah. Till minus one, it's decreasing function at point of inflection. It's okay, yeah. So you know what? Actually, my concave downwards is still minus two. So I will draw my graph of minus two, like my concavity downwards till minus two, and then I will change my concavity to upwards or just a little bit upwards, yeah. Just see over here. It will be something like this. Actually, not a straight line properly. Okay. Okay, something like this. And at minus one, there is a minima, okay? 
and after that the function is increasing so similarly you can say my function is increasing at a point minus one it's having a minima so something like this i can draw actually yeah just drawing it carefully as much as i can and so something like this and then it's increasing function mm. it will move straight from here something like this because still one it's increasing so the so therefore i have written so that's how i've drawn my graph till one as an increasing function because it's increasing till one over here and also over here so that's why i've just drawn till one exactly and after one it says it's decreasing function and it says It's a decreasing function, okay? So, and it's concave upwards. So I will be just using this side, okay? Just see it carefully over here. It's concave upwards also, and it's decreasing also. So my graph will look something like this, okay? So now, like my graph is ready. And so now here is my graph, which looks like this. So these were the all steps that I've followed for making up the curve. So I hope you all like it. Thanks for watching it. And yeah, if you want to book an appointment, you can book it with the PHK on one-to-one -one basis. Thank you all. Thank you so much.